Welcome to this meeting of Wirral Planning Committee. My name is Stuart Kelly and I'm the Chair of the Planning Committee. This meeting will be webcast and a record retained on the Council website. For people at home viewing the webcast, if you look above the meeting, you will see a resources tab. Select this and a link to the agenda will appear on the right hand side. This will enable you to open the agenda reports as PDFs. My role is to ensure the meeting runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour and ethics. To explain who are with us tonight, planning officers, a highway engineer and an environmental health officer. They will present the applications and provide any technical advice that may be required. The council solicitor, who will give advice on any procedural or legal matters that may arise. There is also the clerk and IT support. The elected members will consider the applications and collectively make the decisions. Voting will be by show of hands. Each application will be introduced by the planning officers. I've not been informed of any other speakers before us tonight, so we will then move to debate uh, the uh, application um, and then we will make a decision on the application. When making decisions, members must have regard to the provisions of the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act, which requires decision makers to only have regard to material planning considerations. Members must also have regard to local planning policies and to the National Planning Policy Framework and Guidance. The National Framework makes a presumption in favour of sustainable development. Paragraph 11 requires approval of development proposals that accord with an up-to-date development plan without delay, unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the policies in the National Framework taken as a whole. It's a matter for each member individually to balance any material considerations and to decide what weight to give them. Members must not predetermine any matter which comes to the committee for decision. However, it is permissible for members to be predisposed toward a particular outcome with regards to an application, provided they don't make up their minds on how to vote before formally considering the application details, listening to any presentations and the debate. Members must have listened to the debates and considered all the facts before deciding whether or not to move any motion. If a member is minded to put forward a motion, it is always good practice to first seek advice from officers on the wording of a potential motion. Members are reminded to use their microphones when speaking. Um, I've been advised of um, three uh, apologies for absence from councillors Gardner, Kenny and Frost. And I understand the Council of Light and Whittingham will be deputising. Agenda item one then, to approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of August 2021. I'll move those minutes. Is there a seconder? Seconded uh, over there. Are they approved? I'll take them as approved. Thank you. Uh, agenda item two, members code of conduct, declarations of interest. Members of the committee are asked whether they have any personal or prejudicial interests in connection with any application on the agenda, and if so, to declare them and to state the nature of the interests. No. Okay, we can move then on to uh, the only item we have on the agenda, item three, um, Dane Court, 37 Oldham Drive, Heswell. It's here because of the number of written objections we've been received. Um, if the planning officer could introduce the report, please. Thank you, Chair. This applic the application site is located within a primary residential area um, designated within our Wills Unitary Development Plan. This is the last plot to be developed within the grounds of Dean Court. The application is for the construction of an apartment block of five units in a part three, part two storey built form. Could I have slide three, please? This application has been submitted following the refusal and subsequent appeal dismissal of a larger six unit scheme shown in, shown in this slide. The previous scheme was refused on the grounds that the design bulk and mass would be detrimental to the character of the area and that there was insufficient information to ensure that there would be no impact on the remaining trees. Could I have slide four, please? Following the subsequent appeal decision, the planning inspectors considered that the main issues to assess in relation to the appeal replicated the council's reasons for refusal and that the proposal would therefore be in com conflict with UDP policies HS4, GR5 and GR6. 
and paragraphs 12 and 127 of the framework. As a re result of the inspector's decision, the scheme has now been amended and the revised elevational treatment has reduced the amount of glazing across the front elevation and the, with recessed balconies on the upper floors. The elevational treatment um, is in character with it uh, is in character with a subordinate pitched roof central element positioned between two gables. Either side of these gables are two-storey um, subservient additions. These help to reduce the bulk and scale of the development in line with the inspector's report. Could I have slide seven, please? In relation to the inspector's report um, regarding the footprint of the scheme occupying much of the plot, the current scheme has a much reduced footprint and, uh, and the proposed parking is now all at the rear. This will allow for additional planting along the site frontage. The height of the ridge neaves have also been reduced. The ridge height by 2 metres from 12.8 to 10.8 and the eaves height from 8.3 to 7.8. We have slide 8, please. In relation to the inspector's concerns regarding the ability of the scheme to be built whilst retaining well, all trees, in particular tree 6, the applicants have responded by reducing the footprint of the development, which reduces the level of, level of encroachment onto the root protection area from 58 square metres to 32 square metres. It is therefore considered that the scheme can be developed without any resulting harm to the remaining trees, subject to a condition um, to secure protection measures, which is attached at the rear of this report. It is therefore considered that this revised scheme addresses the previous reasons for refusal and provides a development that is consistent with the character of the area and elim eliminates development pressure on the remaining trees. The proposal meets the required interface distances and will not impact on the amenities of surrounding occupiers through overlooking or, or, or loss of um, There are no objections from highways, from a highways point of view because the proposals, proposals and access are all contained within the boundary of the application site and do not impact on the adopted highway. Could I have slide nine, please? Some of the consultation res responses related to the fact that they would have preferred to see a dwelling approved under um, a previous approval application reference 18148. However, the height and massing of, the, of this dwelling is not dissimilar, could both have the same ridge heights of 10.8 metres. So it's for these reasons, um, and out, all those outlined in the report, that it's considered that this proposal is now acceptable and complies with both national and local plan policy advice and is recommended for approval subject to the conditions attached to this report and the addendum condition on um, the addendum. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, we'll just start off if there's any questions on the on the officer report. I think um, if we can can just ask because because we are looking at something which um, has something of a history. Um, the last application obviously was refused. One of the issues in the refusal was the uh, root protect this business of the root protection zone. Um, and I think we turned it down based on the lack of information they were giving us about how they were planning to protect um, the tree. I can't remember the number, I think it's tree uh, six. Um, the report suggests that um, development should be avoided within a roof protection area. Now we understand it's not unusual. C can we just get a bit more information on, on building in, in, in root protection areas and just be satisfied that the tree will be protected and is in danger? Um, certainly, contained within the um, agricultural statement, there's a, a foundation construction method, which basically means that they're going to install a pile and beam foundations, which these actually go underneath the, re the roots, so they are protected, um, well, 100%. 100 percent. 100%, well, hopefully. And I guess the other point, the point's been made that the, the, the building that some of the objectors say they prefer, well, indeed, the, the building that has a good permission on it is the same height as, as this application. Um, and in, in terms of its mass, because that, that was an issue for the, for the last, um, for the refused one. In terms of its mass and bulk, what, what can we say about the difference there? Yes, um, this current proposal, um, the height is, has been reduced, the scale and the massing has been reduced. It's got two um, two-storey elements 
either side that flank the main part of the building. Um, the footprint has been reduced. If you look at um, slide seven, you can see there's, 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 a, there's a marked reduction in the actual footprint of the building, which helps reduce the scale and the, scale and the massing. Um, the hard, sur hard, hard surfaced area to the front has been removed and all parking is now at the back. That gives us a chance to get some additional planting at the front, which was a concern of the inspector. Okay. Anything from members? Yes. Yeah, through you, Chair. Um, in terms of the scale and mass of the um, previous, the application that has been approved that was for a house, what is the difference in the scale and mass of the uh, proposed application compared to the one that's already had approval? Please, Joan. Thank you. Um, the applicants have advised that the volume of the dwelling that was approved um, actually was 2,109 uh, cubic metres compared to this proposal, which is one, just over 1,500 um, square metres, so uh, cubic metres, sorry. So that has reduced um, the actual volume of the development as well. So it's less than the, the house that was approved, right? Uh, thanks, Chair. <coughs> I noticed that one of the comments um, for the representations in the summary um, refers to impact on the green belt. We just confirm um, that, that this borders the green belt. It doesn't actually f fall into the green belt. Thank you. Yes, I can uh, certainly confirm that. The application's in a site designated for as a primary residential area. The green belt starts over the road opposite the site. Any other comments? Steve, sorry. Yes, Chair. Um, I think one of the, the, the arts of planning is really um, to seek improvements in applications. And if we look at the appeal decision, which is a material consideration for the planning committee, there's certainly been some mileage made in terms of response to that. So, i.e. the protection of the trees has been confirmed and the, the height and the massing uh, and the appearance uh, has also been dramatically changed. So I think the committee should take some credit for actually coming with a, uh, eventually coming with a, an application which seems to have been an improved one. It may never be perfect for every single resident, but certainly seems an improvement on, on the last application. And I, am, I didn't have time to look where the um, letters of support come from, because we tend to look more at planning committee on those who um, are opposed, because that's you know where, where lots of pressure comes from. But I'm glad to see that they are taking on board the, the, the momentum of our local plan, and it does refer to reduces pressure, uh, housing pressures, all, albeit by five, and re reduces pressure on the green belt. And to comment on my uh, colleagues, it, this is not in the green belt, so it does fit that bill. Um, and I've looked through the reasons for you know, objection, uh, and most of them have been, been negated by uh, comments from the planning officer. So my view would be that it's um, something worthy of support. And unless anyone else wanted to speak, I would move approval. I shall happily second that. Any, any other comments? Before we, we move to it, I haven't heard anyone speak against them in agreement. I think uh, uh, the the, um, the architect has reacted to the um, uh, to the reasons for refusal based on the design and massing, and obviously has come forward with uh, with the information that we need so far as the protection of the tree is concerned. Um, it's a fair point to say that some of the objections that we've received would be objections, presumably that were also received when the house. Uh, was um, which could be built, uh, which is still uh, a good plan of permission could be built. Some of those would be exactly the same uh, objections received, so would be impossible to overcome. I can't see the uh, the, the harm um, in allowing this this application, and unless there's anything else, we can, the indeed, uh, we'll move to a vote. Um, there is the addendum agenda uh, with new condition. Uh, new condition number 
10, uh, which deals with the construction management plan. Everybody happy with that? Okay, so um, simple yes or no then. So voting will be for, against the motion to approve. See those in favour, please? That's unanimous. Um, that application has been approved. That being the only application we need to deal with, I will declare the meeting closed and thank everyone for their attendance.